Hey guys, let's get more news about Dallas, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Dan Orlovsky, the Dallas Cowboys should move on from Dak Prescott. One of the odder parts of this NFL offseason that has, thus far, flown largely under the radar has been the Dak Prescott contract situation. As we all know the Dallas Cowboys are the crown jewel of daytime studio debate, so the audience has heard quite a bit about their off-season moves, really the lack thereof, in the opening weeks of free agency. For all the complaining and criticism we've heard regarding the Cowboys' refusal to spend big and replace departing talent like Tony Pollard, there hasn't really been much about the fact that Prescott is entering the final year of his deal. Which is a mistake, because what Dallas decides to do with Prescott this offseason will directly reflect the thinking of Jerry Jones and how things will go down for America's team in the near future. Quarterbacks of Prescott's caliber and veteran status almost never play out the final year of their contract. He's been heavily scrutinized over the last few seasons as Dallas has ascended to perennial contender status, but Prescott remains, at worst, a top 15 quarterback in the NFL. At best, he flirts with top five status. That kind of player at that position is the most valuable asset in all of sports. Yet, to this point, the Cowboys seem content to risk it all and let Prescott play out the last year of his deal with a wandering eye. Perhaps they agree with Dan Orlovsky, who made the argument on first take today that the franchise should blow it up completely by dumping Prescott because Jerry Jones will always have Super Bowl aspirations yet continuously fails to give his team Super Bowl support. Orlovsky has a point. I personally do not think the Cowboys should do as he suggests, but the way he frames it makes the argument a lot more palpable. If the choice is between forcing Prescott and Mike McCarthy into a prove-it season where they have to make a deep playoff run to get re-signed or just start over with C.D. Lamb and Micah Parsons as cornerstones, why waste time with the former? Even with a fully loaded roster with zero weaknesses, there are so many variables that can get in the way of a Super Bowl run that have zero to do with how good of a quarterback Prescott is. He could have the best season of all time and still fall short. At which point, do the Cowboys move on? Do they sign him to an even pricier extension? If he falters, do they boast they knew it all along and release him? What is the purpose of waiting an extra year to press the blow it up button if you've already got your finger on it, as indicated by not signing Prescott this offseason? Dallas needs to pick a direction and go with it. Being decisive is how winners are bolt in the NFL. So far, it seems like the Jones family is waffling and it won't work out for them the way they loudly proclaim they want if they continue on this path. Brock Hoffman ready to be that guy at center in 2024. While the Dallas Cowboys offseason has been chaotic for some, for others it's been rather consistent since the abrupt end to the 2023 season in January. Of those in the latter group, you'll be hard-pressed to find a more consistent daily routine than what Brock Hoffman has been experiencing in the last two months. Whether it's training in Frisco with renowned offensive line trainer Duke Miniweather, doing Pilates twice a week, something he described as one of the hardest workouts of his life, or being in the facility at the crack of dawn to get a workout in, Hoffman has been training relentlessly in recent weeks to take the next step going into his third season. That routine caught a minor break last Thursday when he participated in the team's first-ever STEM event for local boys and girls club students at the Star, where he ran a station teaching kids how to properly snap the ball. My mom was always a schoolteacher, so it's about being an inspiration for kids to stay in school, get that education, something that someone can't take away from you, Hoffman said. It was cool for it to be my first time really in Dallas to give back to the community, so I couldn't really pass up the opportunity. It was a fitting station for Hoffman, who took on the responsibility of starting at center early in the season against Arizona last year and is now staring at an open job in the middle of the Cowboys' offensive line going into the offseason after the departure of Tyler Biadas. What may have seemed small on the surface, Hoffman's community effort was a clear depiction of the biggest thing he is working towards this offseason. It's on my mind every day right now, to be honest with you, Hoffman said about the open starting spot. 
I'm training like I'm ready to be that guy. I'm humbled. I've done everything that I've had to do. I've faced some adversity, being cut off the practice squad. I feel like that's all led to this moment, and I'm ready to do what I need to do to help this team win a championship. While the departure of Biadas allowed the opportunity for Hoffman, he will still miss one of his best friends in the locker room. While he said their close relationship may have seemed awkward to some given their competition, Hoffman said his own growth wouldn't have been possible without his friendship with the guy in front of him on the depth chart. It's been tough, man, he said. We were starter and backup, but we are really close. Obviously, he signed a really nice deal, but it's tough for him. He's leaving Dallas, a place that's been home for four years now. I know he's excited to get there and start a new journey, but a lot of credit for my growth during the season goes to him being there and being able to push each other. An opportunity lies ahead for Hoffman, regardless of where Dallas decides to go in the draft or if second-year interior lineman TJ Bass could also compete for the job. After getting two starts last season and taking advantage of those opportunities, he's ready for the big one in front of him. I'm just so thankful that I got those two starts, he said. I feel like I made tremendous improvements from the end of camp to the end of the season. For me, it's just building on that. I'm ready to be that guy. I'm doing everything that I can to show the coaches, show the organization that I'm ready to go. Cowboys named best fit for former $40 million pro bowler. There's no sense in bemoaning the Cowboys' approach to free agency at this point, or their approach to making changes in the wake of last year's playoff flop against the Packers. They've sat still on working to get a contract extension for Dak Prescott that could have freed up money to sign players, they've sat still on bolstering the offensive line, the defensive line and the running game, and mostly let their best free agents walk. But they still need to sign some players, and if team vice president Stephen Jones is right, now would be a good time for the Cowboys to get active. Jones has said that the Cowboys sat out the first wave of free agency so that the team could find bargain deals in the later stages. We're in the later stages. Now, the Cowboys could get a pretty good deal to bolster their thin and injury-prone offensive line. Former Jets guard Lakin Tomlinson, who was cut in late February as part of an attempt to rebuild a woebegone New York offensive line. According to ESPN's Bill Barnwell, in an article titled, 2024 NFL Free Agency, Best Team Fits for 20 Unsigned Players, the Cowboys would be the best fit for Tomlinson this season. Tomlinson is a dependable nine-year veteran who has played for the Lions and 49ers before signing with the Jets on a three-year, $40 million contract. He earned a Pro Bowl spot in 2021 and has not missed a start since 2017. Where the Jets set Tomlinson free because his cap number was too big, he was set to bring a cap hit of $18.9 million in 2024, the Cowboys could get him at a much more reasonable number. At 32, he is not going back to the Pro Bowl, but the Cowboys don't need him to. They just need depth, and Tomlinson has the size and experience to provide that. He is 6 foot 3 and 323 pounds, and still moves relatively well. As Barnwell wrote of Tomlinson, viewed through a more realistic lens at age 32, though, he's a solid guard who offers more as a run blocker than a pass blocker. While his best work came with the 49ers, when Kyle Shanahan was still leaning more toward zone concepts, he's probably best in a gap scheme where his size and power play up. The Cowboys, of course, lost stalwart left tackle Tyron Smith this month, as the team opted not to bring him back in free agency. He signed on with the Jets this week. That means Tyler Smith, who has been playing left guard while waiting to eventually take over for Smith, will finally be the left tackle. The team saw enough from TJ Bass as an undrafted rookie last year to pencil him in as the starting left guard this year. But he is inexperienced and there's no telling if he's ready for a full-time starting role. Tomlinson could handle the job. If Bass beats him out, then that's not a bad thing, but Bass might be better served by another year as a backup. Wrote Barnwell, the Cowboys have a hole on their offensive line. 
If Dallas wants to move 2022 first-round pick Tyler Smith from left guard to left tackle, Tomlinson could step in at guard, where his size would be a plus for a team that failed to impress in short yardage and goal line situations a year ago. And you, fan, what do you think of the situation Lake and Tomlinson? Leave your opinion in the comments.